Hello there, today I have a review of Rise of the Planet of the Apes on Blu-ray and DVD. First thing as always, let's just start off with the packaging. You got the little cardboard sleeve, that's the front, and that's the back. Uh, they got some quotes on here, electrifying, a combination of craft, entertainment, and sheer spectacle from Newsday. Thrilling takes top honors for spectacle, the Wall Street Journal. Astounding Triumph, the year's finest action movie from Time. And uh, you got the inside, which has the same picture, and it's a little it's different on the back. And then you open it up, and you've got your Blu ray, and then your DVD, and digital copy combo. So, your uh, technical stats on this, it's in 5.1 DTS and 2.35 widescreen and the runtime is 105 minutes and that goes for both the Blu-ray and the DVD so next uh, the stars of the movie uh, James Franco Frida Pinto, John Lithgow, Brian Cox, Tom, Tom Felton, and Andy Circus. 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 Uh, I think everybody was really good in this movie, and I thought uh, John Lithgow did a really good job, kind of playing a old senile guy, and kind of made me think maybe he was old and senile. But uh, he did a really good job, and I thought everybody did a good job in this movie. Um, so basically what the movie is about, if you don't, if you haven't seen Planet of the Apes, um, the original Planet of the Apes is where, uh, apes have taken over the planet, and they can talk, and they're kind of more like humans, and then humans are the pets, and so there's been tons of Planet of the Apes movies, and they decided to make a prequel and call it Rise of the Planet of the Apes, and this movie is trying to show how everything began, how it started, and... But there, it doesn't go fully into. But there, there's plenty of time between this one and the original Planet of the Apes, so it doesn't, it doesn't cover everything. But it just gets the start uh, going of how uh, James uh, Franco's character is creating a drug to help cure Alzheimer's for, and then you find out it's for it because his dad has Alzheimer's, and it ends up causing the apes to be super smart, and that's kind of, and then there's a rise obviously of the apes and I won't go too far into that I mean that's the basic plot of the movie and um, so the special features there's a ton of special features on this movie this was the hardest part I really didn't want to do it I didn't want to wait want to get to these but uh, just go through them real quick and a lot of these are have to do with motion capturing and how they used motion capturing in this movie but uh, you got deleted scenes, and there's 11 of them. And most of them don't really offer uh, anything. I mean, they show, like, a little bit, like... But then they just say it, or... I mean, it's, it's just little tiny things. And a lot of the deleted scenes aren't completed. They're just in motion capture form. And uh, there was... Uh, it, it was called a deleted scene, but it was an alternate scene where... Uh, I can't remember the the other ape's name. He had pushed the the helicopter off the bridge, and they they had an alternate scene where uh, Caesar pushed it off the bridge. So that one was kind of interesting. It, it might have changed the movie a little bit, uh, changed Caesar's character. So I think to, he ended up being kind of like a good guy, like he didn't want to hurt humans and stuff. So I think that is you know obviously that would have changed that. So they took that out. And then you have uh, mytho Mythology of the Apes, which basically they went into about how this was a prequel, and how uh, and they talked about the original movie, and how they, they tried to bring as much stuff and knowledge that was gained in the, uh, the original Planet of the Apes movies, and incorporate it into this movie. So they weren't just making stuff up, they were like, okay, this was said, so we can do this. Like, I guess the original ape at one point in the, the original franchise was said that its name was Caesar 
so they created the character named Caesar, and they they threw in a lot of that kind of stuff. You know, that's a little interesting, but you know, it's okay. And then they have uh, the genius of Andy Circus, and uh, that's the guy who plays Caesar. Uh, he's like the motion capture guy, and it just really talks about him and how he got into motion capture and how good he is at it. And I don't know, just mostly about motion capture. And then a new generation of apes, and then that kind of goes into why they used motion capture and how they were like, well, we can't we can't just have people in suits, and we can't uh, we can't just do it all CGI, and you know, more about motion capture really. Then they had scene breakdown, which was uh, like one scene, and you could press a button and you could see it either in like early animation, like before all the textures were added, and just like the basic animation, or you could watch it uh, in the motion capture form where it had all the motion capture actors. You could watch the finished product, and that was that was kind of neat because you could uh, you could you could really see how they got from one stage to the next. But it's pretty short, you know, just one scene. I didn't understand this one. Co character concept art gallery. They, they just had a... All I could tell that they had were uh, all the main apes. There were two pictures of each. And I could never figure out how to get out of it. I had to turn uh, my PlayStation off to get back to the menu. So, I really don't understand that. Uh, <laughs> breaking motion capture boundaries. This is just more about... Uh, actually showing them doing the motion capture. I guess this was the first uh, motion capture done outdoors. And it was kind of interesting to show the green screens. They showed how they... Because I guess they could only capture uh, so many motion capture uh, actors at a time. So they had to run through scenes over and over and over so they could get all the apes. And, you know, that was kind of interesting just to see how they did all the motion capture. And they have, like, all these dots on their face. So... The, when you see the apes facial expressions you know it's it's the guys who are making those expressions and they just transfer it over to the apes and they kind of went into uh, they went into like how they, how they actually built the apes too like they, they would actually uh, digitally create a skeleton muscle skin hair and so that's why it looks so real because all those components are there and they have them real realistically moving so it just looks real uh, composing the score I mean I didn't even I watched like the first minute it just was showing a guy composing the music and you know with an orchestra and all that I'm not, I'm not very interested in that and then uh, the last one was the great apes which uh, they talked about chimpanzees gorillas and orangutans I always thought it was orangutans but I guess the orangutans, and they just kind of talked about uh, their mating habits and their intelligence and their, you know, kind of the way they live. And a lot of them are endangered, which I think was the main, the main goal of this was to get out, get out the information to people that they're endangered animals, and you know, obviously try to conserve them because these are amazing animals. Obviously, I mean, they're they're almost human, so. I mean, it was a lot. Of, it was pretty interesting, and uh, they said the problem with the orangutans is that the females can only have a baby every seven to nine years or something. So it's like it takes forever for them to, you know, have more offspring. So uh, yeah, those were the those were the special features. Like I said, mostly all of them were on motion capture. But uh, let's talk about the picture quality. Now, these are probably the best DVDs and Blu-rays I've seen. Uh, very high quality picture and uh, uh, besides just the picture, you know, the special effects on this movie I think are amazing. Uh, everyone I talked to thought they were amazing and they, you know, they, everything looks so realistic and lifelike and you can't even, you know, when I watched it and if you watch this and you don't uh, have the insider information you can't tell if they're real apes or not. You don't know if like some of them are real and some of them are CGI, or you don't you don't know. It just looks so real. And uh, but between the DVD and the Blu-ray, obviously the Blu-ray has a better picture. But it's an amazing picture on the DVD. Uh, the Blu-ray is a little clearer and a little better color. But other than that, they're pretty much the same. This the score on this movie. 
that was a little little hard for me to do. Um, it's a really good movie, but I think also that uh, I'm going to give it a 4 out of 5. Just because, you know, it's a prequel, it's, it's not something new, and I don't think it's a perfect movie. I don't think it's, like, one of the greatest movies I've ever seen. But I definitely think it's a very good movie. I've already seen it twice in just a few weeks, and I enjoyed it just as much the second time as the first. And, you know, the special effects will just, like, blow your mind. And uh... But I'm going to do, uh, I'll have an annotation on the screen, and I'll just, uh... If you want to hear how it ends and kind of the inside details, uh, I'll make a video on that. And, you know, let me know what you think of the movie and let me know what you think of the review. Maybe you give it a different score. Maybe you think this is a five. I don't know. Uh, thanks for watching.